Yo, good morning, everybody. Hope everyone's well. Just getting set up here. And uh, what we're gonna do today, guys, is we're gonna just do some some Q&A. So I wanted to just hop on here and um, normally I have a, a discussion that I wanna talk about, but today I just wanna do some Q&A with you guys. Let me flip this this way. Cool. Cool. Is this better or is the other way better? Let me know in the comments. And then uh, what I want to do is you guys just start firing away on your questions and um, I'm going to get through as many as I can. So I have some coffee. This is better. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's get rolling with some questions. And uh, if you guys are just getting here, don't forget to like this video. Let me know where you guys are from. Um, <clears throat> Emily, I'll answer your question. My 16th mold, Aussie, continues to have issues with other dogs. I have to yank on the prong to pull back from lunging and hit the remote collar, but as I go up on the remote, he seems to have worse reaction. Um, <clears throat> it's a pretty layered question, and as you guys know, like whenever I answer dog training questions or it, whenever I put out uh, content on dog training the context is always like very specific on what I'm working with how I'm working with it so um, take take all the information that I ever say with a grain of salt and apply it where it fits um, but what I would do Emily is I would suggest going to my old YouTube video my older YouTube video that goes over how to correct a dog properly um, mainly because if you're correcting a dog improperly, like it sounds like you're pulling back on the prong collar, which um, unfortunately won't work. You have to pop it. There's many, so there's a right way and a wrong way to actually correct a dog on a prong collar, any collar uh, for that matter, slip collar, martingale collar, prong collar, so on and so forth. Um, but let me demonstrate what that means really quick. I'll grab one of my prong collars and I think that like a lot of people struggle with this particular their problem I'll just go over it really quick but it, but what I would suggest is to go and watch the video that I did on how to correct a dog properly because um, it's just such an under underestimated thing I think when people are using prong collars so let me really quickly go over Denver what's good Wisconsin what's up fresh cheese curds <laughs> so let me just go over the correction on the prong collar really quickly and this is for Emily and anybody else that's um, a bit hesitant or doesn't really know how the prong collar mechanics work. So this is a Herm Springer 2.25 prong collar. So this is the collar I use on Lakota, my Dutch Shepherd. And so when a dog is has the prong collar on like this, on the contrary of popu popular belief, when a prong collar is on a dog and it's pulling like this, so if your dog is reacting and pulling and you're here, the prong collar doesn't work. The, the actual prongs going against the dog's skin or the dog's neck is not what makes the correction happen. These are not sharp. These are not intended to hurt a dog with resistance. These are intended to help you or assist you or help you communicate with your dog with a pop of the leash. So when your leash is on, the correction actually is this. So when the prongs come up in unity and correct the dog, that's what you're getting. So I would suggest Emily to just take a step back and I think Lakota got something in my coffee. <laughs> but I would take a step back and just really go over your, uh, your heel command, um, your leash pressure. Um, and if, if the remote collar is causing more elevation in the reactivity, just stop using it for right now and take a step back. Um, the other thing that I always suggest to people that are dealing with this type of situation with dogs is just try to find a trainer that can help you in person. <clears throat> All right, let's get some more questions going. Kenna, that's a cool name. I'm in Georgia and I love your videos. How do you recommend training a terrier and a Shepsky to not chase cats? Is it possible? Thank you for watching. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. So as you guys know, like for me, um, taking away a dog's like innate ability to do certain things that's pretty um, wanted or is like very natural. So a dog that's going to chase, like my dog right now is like hearing birds. So she's very like attentive and she's looking. Um, and, for her, and for dogs to like have a prey drive and to chase other animals is very primal. 
Um, so for me, like I always answer this question kind of layered, but the, but the answer for me is, is always, you're not going to be able to necessarily like remove that primalistic primal, like, like Lakota right now, as you guys can see, like she's, I don't know if you can see her, but right now she's like super focused on like birds that are chirping in the, uh, in the tree. So you're not going to be able to like tell a fish not to swim is what I tell people. Like you're not going to be able to remove the, um, innate wanting to chase like cats. However, um, if your obedience is good, um, and your structure and your discipline and your relationship is good with your dog, then you're going to be able to restrict the play. Uh, or I'm sorry, the chase and, or you're going to be able to correct the dog for doing so, but you're not going to be able to successfully. Well, I shouldn't say you're not going to be able to, but I think it's going to be really hard and really frustrating to try to completely remove that behavior and modify that because it's like literally telling a fish not to swim. Dogs have uh, those prey drives. So, um, what I always suggest to my clients, uh, same thing with me, like Lakota, my Dutchie, she loves, she, I have a cat, um, that I rescued, um, at a dog thing I was doing, um, because the, the cat's, um, uh, dad was killed by the dogs I was working with at the time. Sad story. Anyway, I have a cat. Um, and like for me, I don't expect her not to ever chase the cat. However, if she's doing it, I can recall her off and I can send her away um, or put her into a downstay and she'll do that. So I think the expectation for any dog that's chasing cats or doing those like really primalistic, primalistic things um, is to counter condition it with obedience because it's unrealistic to get your dog to not chase cats. Um, if they have that prey drive and they have that in them, it's probably going to happen. So just work on your obedience. I hope that helps. Um, how, how do you stop? So Pauline asks, how do you stop jealous behavior? Give all your dogs equal attention. Um, I think that that you answered that question. Yes. Um, I think just ultimately, uh, making sure that you're being a good leader and you're not individualizing different. Well, I think it doesn't really matter how much love and affection you give your dog as long as you have balance and that's what, that's what like the key, to, like everyone, everyone has asked me to like write a book, um, or like an ebook or something, which I, I would love to do, but like, it would be like three pages, like balance, um, structure and walk your dog, <laughs> the end. So, um, I think just making sure that you have balance, like if you're going to give your dog a lot of a love and affection, make sure that that's secondary to structure and, and like work. So um, I think if dogs are jealous, it's because you have an unhealthy relationship with them. Like if you're petting one dog and the other dog gets upset, that's because they don't care about, like that's just like two kids fist fighting right in front of their parents. There's no respect there. So you gotta like realign your relationship. Um, do you know how to get your dog certified at ESA, emotional support animal? I don't, um, I, I, don't I have no idea. It's not my gig, sorry. Uh, jo Joanne, I think asked, uh, the slip collar won't stay in place. Make it tighter. If the slip collar is on, um, and it's falling, it's not tight enough. So you, that, so I have a video on DIY slip collar. Um, type that in the YouTube and you'll find the way that I make slip collars and I make sure it's tight and customized right behind the dog's ear. If it's slipping, it's cause it's not tight enough. Uh, and I'm going to keep rolling through these questions. So, um, you guys keep asking away and, uh, I'll keep firing through as many as I can. Uh, in your experience, is there any breeds that you find more difficult to correct consistent? Be yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a good question. A hundred percent. Um, there's certain dogs that are certain. I don't even want to say it's like, there's, there's three breeds and I'll talk about this for a second. Cause this is like, this is something that's interesting. There's three breeds that, um, are consistently like the same when I get them, they are literally like the same, you know, the same consistent behavior. They act the same. Um, they, they resist the same. They vocalize the same. There's three breeds. There's the Shiba Inu, the Siberian Husky and the Great Dane. Every single one of those breeds that's ever come to train with me have all been consistently the same. Like there's like when we get German Shepherds, Beagles, like any other breed, it's all very individualized, um, but those three breeds, um, you know, definitely are consistently the same. But furthermore, um, there's there's obviously like more breeds out there that need more work. I would say the majority of dog owners' problems 
um, like on a baseline, like I said before, my three page book is exercise. People don't exercise their dogs nearly as I've already brought my dogs on a walk today and I plan on bringing them hiking later. Um, and I understand that people are busy and lives get chaotic, um, COVID or not COVID, um, dogs, generally dogs like bad behavior, bad behavior or, um, like annoyance or consi consistently like habitual barking. Um, come from lack of mental and physical stimulation, AKA like just a freaking walk. Uh, I, for those of you who don't know, I used to be an animal control officer. Um, so I would respond to like a lot of different, like it was a really shitty job to be honest, because I had to deal with uh, like all the really crummy people of where I lived working, you know, with dogs and nobody exercised their dogs like the way that they needed to. Dogs were getting hit by car all the time because dogs were so pent up sitting in their backyard. It's just sad. So, um, you know, having like, having like a very versatile, um, um, I guess education of like what I've done in my career. Like I've done so much with dogs professionally in my career and the 13 years, like I, I've, I'm going to do this obviously for the rest of my life, but <clears throat> you know, um, so, you know, anyway, it's just, it's crazy. It's crazy. But anyway, uh, what tricks and behaviors to teach your dog when you first get your puppy? Uh, Regina, it's a good question. It just depends on like, I always tell people whatever your, whatever your dog is going to do at the age that you get them, you're, you're structuring them up for how they're going to act in the future. So if you want your dog to do certain things in the future, structure them for that right now. Um, obviously there's different restrictions and like guidelines to like working dogs so or competitive dogs like if you're going to compete or you're going to like work your dog in search and rescue or whatever like obviously those are different guidelines to make sure that your dog is developed fundamentally but i think ultimately just start whenever you get your dog and building a good relationship for me with puppies relationship comes first training comes second um my other my associate trainer zach uh, actually is on his way back home from chicago right now um getting his puppy he's got a german shepherd puppy her name's zora um, and sh we're actually going to be doing like a whole series with her on my YouTube channel of puppy development. Um, so that will be like answering everyone's puppy questions. Cause I typically don't do puppies cause I'm a behavior modification, um, specialist. So I usually only work with dogs with behavioral problems. So we're going to switch it up a little bit and just do some puppy stuff. So, um, what doggy day, will doggy daycare, Alyssa, Will doggy daycare help with reactivity? He has play dates and he's fine, but on leash he reacts. Yeah, um, if your dog is leash reactive, then doggy, and, and if it's truly just like leash reactivity, then yes, doggy daycare uh, would be good. How do you manage energy? I'm struggling with my Labrador retriever. He's difficult on the leash and his recall is bad. He jumps up and barks excessively. excessively. I'm 13 years old. Um, well, first of all, kudos to you for putting this much time and energy into like helping your, I'm assuming your family dog um, become better and more confident. What I would do, man, is, or girl, I don't know what you are because I can't see your name, but what I would do is um, just start training your dog to know certain behaviors. And um, um, I think to answer your question about jumping, like you have to correct them somehow for jumping. So making sure that you correct the dog for jumping and making sure that you're being uh, a leader for your dog. If nobody else in your family is going to train, then go out and work with your dog on the leash for like 10 minutes, 10 minutes at a time, giving them breaks, working on heels, working on sits, working on stays, etc. cetera. Um, but let's see. <clears throat> My golden retriever has good recall, but a lot of time he just ignores me and stands with his eating grass, uh, eating grass. I, I, I'm just going to, too many questions came in. So I think just, uh, recall. So, um, you know, obviously with me guys, I'm a big, big lover of, uh, the dog chair remote collars. Um, technology has come so far. Um, hence why I'm sitting here having coffee with all of you homies right now, um, via like YouTube live. YouTube, uh, or I mean, technology has come so far, which is why I, I refer a lot of my recall issues with remote collars. Um, but I also think that introducing the remote has to be done by a professional, um, unless you really, really take your time to figure out how to do it. Um, so ultimately like recall to me, if you're not going to use remote collars, um, I would be working on long line recalls. So putting like at least a slip collar on your dog, getting a 30 foot leash out, telling your dog to come and then popping them if they don't, 
I did a video. I think my my most recent like produced video, not live. Um, we touch base on recall and how to introduce it. So check that out. Hello from Israel. What's going on, Israel? Uh, my German Shepherd is getting up used to the e-collar and tests me a lot harder when it's not on her. Um, so just make sure what I would do, very simply, put the e-collar on her as much as you possibly can. First thing in the morning, out. First thing in the morning, put the remote collar on and let them condition to it and wear it as much as you possibly can. Um, how to teach my dog to catch a Frisbee. Um, well, you can't really, what I would first of all do is teach them to catch anything. So like out, get something like this. This is like a little toy and just start throwing things like with Lakota, come here. So like with, I don't know if you guys can see her. Come here, come here, good. So like just start throwing stuff for her to catch or your dog to catch and then tr transition to a really um, easy like th a Frisbee, like a small Frisbee. Hello, sir, good day, hello. I have a three month old Rottweiler and when I'm going to give her a walk outside, she just stops at the gate because other dogs are barking at her. What should I do, sir? Thank you. Um, well, if there's, I, I don't really understand, like if I don't know where you're living, uh, but if there's a bunch of other dogs barking at you, I would simply just try to find a different time to walk your dog. Um, I think that that's huge. Uh, and then as well as like lots of positive reinforcement. Um, one thing that works really well with dogs who are like very not wanting to move and don't do anything um, is they, you need like a long line to kind of lure them out. Um, so try to do a long line as well as maybe just trying to go at a time where there's not a lot of dogs. <clears throat> I'm gonna have a couple of sips of coffee. Uh, if you guys are here, like this video. Um, uh, we have like I think sun's 200 like almost 250 people here and 50 likes which is awesome so if you guys are here I'm gonna take a couple sips of this like this video really quick and uh code is here Lola's in the truck come here cokes come here baby ass come yes good ass fui couche no couche Yes. All right, I'm gonna get back to answering some questions. Yay, we had a bunch of likes, thank you. So the reason why I tell you guys to like the video is because it helps other people who follow me know that I'm live so we can answer more questions. Um, all right, Amanda, I hear you, dog. Um, please help me, I'm fostering a dog that is around one year old and was run, run maybe most of the puppy life. Her neck grew around her collar and had to get surgically removed. How do I get her on the leash? Um, I think the question is, is your dog is maybe fearful of the, the collar. Um, so what I would do is just lots of positive reinforcement. So if your dog really likes something like food or a ball or something, um, put the collar on, take it off, put the collar on, take it off, put the collar on, take it off and make it as much as you can. If the dog can't um, physically put the collar on because um, it's sensitive or whatever, then uh, try to do a harness and try to like desensitize that. Uh, how do I sh uh, help me get my help me Lindsay asks help me to get my rescue German Shepherd comfortable with the hose for giving him baths any tips are welcome um, well again this kind of goes back to what I talked about in the beginning of this video um, with dogs like being naturally afraid or hesitant or reluctant to do certain things um, a hose uh, you know spurting out like freezing cold water is something that they don't enjoy so they're going to want to try to get away so the best thing to do is just try to acclimate your dog to the hose uh, in a very positive way by maybe like having somebody hold your dog and then putting it over them and giving them lots of positive reinforcement as you're doing that but again that's just one of those things that it's really tough um, when you're getting your dog to like acclimate to something that they hate how do I teach my dog to heal command? He's four years old. Uh, Cad, I have probably 25 videos on exactly how to do that. Um, so I would recommend out. I would recommend checking that out. <clears throat> uh, good morning, Tom from California. Hey, good morning, Kimberly. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. I know it's kind of early there, but thanks for hanging out with us. What's been your favorite case and why? Um, I don't know. Um, I think... I think, I mean, sorry, it's a motorcycle. I think a lot of, a lot of cases are like my favorite. Um, 
you know, as of lately, like we're not, as you guys know, may or may not know, we're not doing private training right now. So it's been a little difficult to like get as much content as I can out here, which is why I'm going live in between my, my fully like produced videos. Um, but I think like every case is my favorite. I love when people come in and they like need help, like to the furthest extent and I'm able to do that. So I, I love all the work that I've done so far. Um, Jeez, lots of questions. I appreciate you guys hopping on. This is fun. Um, are you going to England? Are you in England or America? I'm in America. What brought you to move from New York to Colorado? I'm not in Colorado. A lot of people think that I... So I traveled to... Col Col I was born in Colorado. Um, I love Colorado. Um, I would love to move back to Colorado. Uh, I, I only lived there when I was a little baby. But um, Colorado, I visit it a couple times a year because it, it, I, lo I have a lot of clients there. And um, I also just absolutely love Colorado. It's like a very, very, very special place for me. So um, I'm actually in New York. But trust me, if, if I could be in Colorado, I would. And it's something that I've thought about in the near future. Um, any certifications one should look for when trying to find a dog trainer? Ooh, that's a really great question. I love those questions. Um, so, you know, I talk about this frequently. Um, the dog training certification process is a very weird thing, and I'll give you my experience with it. Um, in most cases, dog training certifications are filling out and studying curriculum via textbook or online. Uh, I, I'm a mentor tra trainer for the Animal Behavioral College of the United States um, from what I understand, it's pretty good curriculum. And at the end, they have to go and shadow somebody, uh, and put in their hours to basically get certified. But the problem is, is, um, not just with that company. Um, but the problem is, is I think a lot of people get in, let me answer your question. Cause I'll get off on a tangent. I don't want to do that. Um, I don't think so. I don't think that there's certain certifications you have to look for. What I tell people as far as clients looking for dog trainers look at reviews, look at, uh, and read between the lines. Um, I mean, cause look at reviews, look at videos, um, look at stuff they're doing with their dog. Like what we do is, um, obviously like for us, um, we're like a pretty big company, like in our area because we train so many dogs. We have four full-time trainers that train dogs every day, like a ton. Um, as well as like our board and train program, people flying in and coming in from all over the country. Um, we obviously get like a lot of media and like attention for that. Um, and I, you know, for me, it's like the proof is in the pudding for a lot of, for a lot of situations. Like I, I used to go, what I used to do to like try to not only help people, but to help people understand like our business a little bit better and how we do things. I used to literally go live in my training sessions. Like I would just go boom live and I'm going to work with a client like live just to like help people like get a better feel for who we are as a company because I wanted to do that as the business owner because no literally I, first of all, I don't know anybody else that's, that's ever done live sessions, like a completely vulnerability, like going live to thousands of people. Um, I feel really comfortable doing that. So, um, when you're looking for a dog trainer, uh, certifications aren't the only thing you should be looking for. I don't have a certification, although I certify dog trainers for different companies and colleges. So it's like I said, it's a kind of like a really gray area, but, um, anyway, my neighbor's dogs are barking at my Rottweiler. Oh, I lost it. Sorry. Um, Hey Tom from England, can I use a prong collar to help keep my rescue street, my rescue street dog calm and build confidence? Yes. Uh, how long do you, um, how long do you help dogs that struggle with trusting new people or dogs become aggressive? He's on, um, he's a pomchi. Um, just having the people ignore your dog. I think uh, creating structure and guidance and leadership through having people ignore your dog is the best. When I was at the Wolf Sanctuary working with wolves in the summers, when I did that in Colorado. Um, which was an awesome time. Um, the best thing to do for animals or canines who are unweary or nervous of you, um, the best thing to do is to just uh, ignore the animal and they will find uh, trust in that. How do I make meeting other dogs a positive neutral experience for my rescue dog? He can get quite nervous and tense. Um, so just in general, the best thing to do for teaching 
dogs how to communicate with each other or introducing dogs how to communicate with each other is um, to go. I have a video on this. It's a live video. It's kind of it's kind of like not that great, but um, the best thing to do is to just go for a walk and have the dogs be very. First thing is, is meet on neutral grounds. Don't let a dog on your property and meet, especially if you don't know how it's going to go. If you have two dogs that are like gangbusters all the time with every other dog and they're super friendly, then you don't have to worry about anything. But the best thing to do is to just go out and make sure um, that your dog is like getting associated with um, the other dog um, naturally and uh, on a walk and make it structured. So if you're meeting two new dogs, just go for a walk together on neutral grounds. How do I stop him from eating his poo? Uh, well, a lot of times that's a nutritional thing. Um, not a lot of times, but most times it's it's a it's it's a nutrition thing. So sometimes dogs who have deficiencies because of their food, um, they will do that to get like it's a natural thing. Like they are deficient of certain things, and they'll go and do that. Like they'll eat rocks and sticks and poop and like nasty stuff. Um, so check that first. Make sure your dog's getting what they want. Um, Lisa, please help. I have an eight-year-old shepherd becomes more neurotic, hates loud noises, sirens, thunder. So your dog hates sirens or thunderworks, thunderworks, fireworks. Um, she becomes more destructive, busting through crates, climbing at the door. CBD does not work. Um, that's a good question. A lot of people have problems with this. Um, if CBD doesn't work, um, I would do CBD in conjunction with exercise before these things happen, if you possibly can. And then the other thing is, is, um, turning on the music as loud as you possibly can to, to, to white noise, the, the, the stuff, shutting the door, putting them in a calmer space, bringing them to a friend's or family's house. If you're going to have, like if it's 4th of July and you live in an area where there's going to be fireworks, try to go somewhere else, try to plan that out. Um, if it's a storm, the thunder jacket works good. Anxiety crates work good. Putting your dog in an anxiety crate, it's, it's, they cannot escape it. It's impossible. It's forged steel. Um, so those are some tips. Those crates are expensive, but if it's a problem, then what's your feeling with protective dog training? Um, so this is a good uh, subject and this is a really good topic to, to chat about, especially in the dog industry. Um, you know, as you guys know, like I try to stay in my lane as much as humanly possible um, by just doing what I'm good at, which is in what I love, which is behavior modification. And um, so for me, protection dog training is awesome. Uh, we do it at my facility. Um, one of our police canine dudes comes in. His name's Chris Jones. He's super cool. He's one of my good friends. He comes in and does um, protection work. He hasn't done it in a while because COVID and, um, you know, we do it in kind of like seasons. But um, it's, a great, it's a great opportunity for dogs to outlet certain things. Um, most working dogs or most uh, dogs with like a prey drive um, really love it. I think there's an enormous misconception of like what protection dog training is. Um, I can't tell you how many times people actually think that we're training dogs to bite other people. Um, that literally, I mean, yes, that's what we're doing, but it's not about the person. It's about the game, um, that you teach at a very fundamental level. Um, so literally when you, for the most part, when you see a dog like biting the bad guy in a suit, it's because they, they want to play tug with that individual. Um, I've done many demonstrations about that, but you know, it's not really my gig. Um, but I have done it a couple of times. Uh, and I know a lot of people have fun doing it as a hobby for competitive, like ring sports and stuff. So. Um, if you guys are here, I'm going to take some more coffee, like this video. I'm going to answer some more questions with you guys. Daniel, um, do you have any tips for starting a dog training canine behavioralist company? Um, so I've discussed this um, on my podcast, and for those of you, yes, I have a podcast. It's called the No Bad Dogs Podcast. It's ranked. Um, it's actually ranked uh, in the hundred. It's 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 not like a huge. I don't know. It may be a huge accomplishment because I don't know how many people are in this field. But on uh, Spotify and Apple, I'm ranked um, 123rd in all, all podcasting all over the world as far as education goes. So it's a pretty popular podcast, which is cool. Um, and you can just search that in any podcasting platform called No Bad Dogs. Um, but I talk about starting a dog training company. What people don't realize, I'm going to get into a little tangent really quick. Um, so just bear with me for a second. And this is, this is regarding like dog training in general. Um, when I started 
when I started working with dogs, it was it was because my dog died uh, at a very early age. Um, uh, some of you may know this story, some of you may not, but basically my dog died at an early age. It was very traumatic. He died, in my, literally puppy, died in my arms, blue lips, everything. It was really bad. Um, and so long story short, uh, after that time, I was working really, really hard to support that animal because I got kicked out of my house at an early age because I had dogs. Um, so I... I, I like devoted, I, so I worked so much, I wasn't able to spend time with the puppy that passed away. It was kind of like a really bad thing, but serendipity um, kind of kicked in and I started a dog walking business. Um, I got laughed at, made fun of. I was 20, 19, 20 years old, started my own business. I gave my friends my business card and I was told that I was the stupidest person ever for thinking I could run my own business. Um, because, uh, you know, f let's say 12 years uh earlier uh we didn't have like a social media instagram just started happening it wasn't as as it is right now and so long story short um i did dog walking for like five years professionally and i was only working with dogs who couldn't go to doggy daycare so they had behavioral issues they had behavior problems and the reason why i started getting the training is because i just had a couple people because i was known as like the dog guy i was like walking down streets with tons of dogs the whole pack walking thing all that stuff um, so that's what I was known for. And I was young too. So like you have the advantage of still being at that age where everyone was still hanging out as friends and things like that. And so I was known as the dog guy. And that's all I did is I devoted like I, I my entire 20s gone like none of that mattered I worked really 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 hard to devote to master my craft at like understanding dogs and canines. And then I started working with the wolves and everything and so long story short. Um, you know, starting your own dog training company was an organic thing for me. It wasn't something that I thought I was going to do. It just organically rolled into its own thing. Um, and now I'm at where I'm at. And I, I literally feel like I haven't even started. I have so much planned and so much to do for trying to do the best I can in the industry uh, to, to like motivate and to help other people. So um, I think I have a podcast on it. It's, it's called Answering the Number One Question I Get. Check that podcast out. Um, but really it's just about getting your, getting your, all your experience in with as many dogs as you possibly can, um, to, to just gain your experience, like go out and get your hands on dogs, um, and, and do that for an extended amount of time. Um, you know, the dog training industry is also very difficult, um, just because it's extremely saturated and, um, you know, there's a lot of like politics that go into it. Uh, especially if you start getting to a certain point, you're going to have a lot of people trying to like attack you for that. Like I I've worked with a lot of people who shadowed me, worked with me. I've devoted time and energy in helping them. Um, and they turn completely against you once you get to a certain point in your career, um, which I think happens in everybody's career uh, for whatever reason. So it's a very uh, like political, weird thing. Um, and it's a tough thing to be like, try to be successful in because nobody wants you to be successful. Um, so it's tough. But anyway, I would suggest, suggest work hard, work with as many dogs as you can, make the right decisions, um, and just do right by the dog. All right. Um, Chris asked, would you help do e-collar sessions? Um, so when I do, so I do online sessions, guys. For those of you who don't know, you guys can click the link below to work with me directly. E collars and it makes, it's basically consulting. So it's all the questions that you guys are giving. We spend an hour actually talking to each other uh, about the exact things that you're working on. Um, it's it's been extraordinarily helpful to hundreds of people, especially during COVID. Um, I've been doing like five or six sessions every single day um, all over the world, which I've been doing for about four years. Um, so to answer your question, yes. We could talk about it, but um, I also have like a lot of hands-on videos um, of me introducing it with dogs as well. So in conjunction with those, I would say yes. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Can dogs train at any age? Yes. Um, it is a very, it's in every industry, Tom. Success breeds jealousy by others. Rock on. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And it, it's, it's true. It's freaking true. It's really hard. Um, you get, it's tough. It's a tough thing. Um, but you know, I just, I'm working really hard. I have a lot of really good friends in the industry that I'm really happy and grateful for. And, um, we rock out and, you know, just pick your tribe for sure. Um, have you ever worked with two dogs in the same household who can no longer be freely together? Yes. Um, you can't really fix it. You can manage it. Um, so that's really all you can do. How to stop puppy from biting without saying no. Um, 
physical correction. So if you just grab a dog and just kind of like pinch him off of you, um, that's what their mom would do. And if, if it's a puppy that's pretty new, um, then they'll definitely be like really understanding to that because they just went through that. I'm going to do a puppy video soon. Um, Tom, you're the best trainer. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you for everything you do. Um, thank you. Um, uh, so shadow is Chris, Chris. Um, so shadowing right now, um, is looking kind of like weird just because my schedule, as you guys may or may not know, um, basically right now I'm doing on like my normal career is online training and then flying to other people. So, um, and then servicing my out of state clients that come into the facility. So right now, um, my shadow program, because everything is going to get funneled as soon as the gates kind of open up next month, my whole schedule is going to like probably go crazy. Excuse me. So um, shadowing right now is going to be a little tough because my inconsistent schedule. And obviously we don't want you guys to come in. Um, you can shadow my other trainers, but um, I, I don't know my schedule because of the whole COVID thing. So you can check back um, with my uh, website. Um, my little rescue puppy, Toby. A lab hound mix is afraid of other dogs, not to, not to the point where he's aggressive, but he's skittish. What should I do? Um, it's a good question. I, what I would do is just make sure that you get your dog around the proper dog. So very neutral, um, calm, friendly dogs um, is, is a good opportunity. If you get your dog around a bunch of really like overwhelming dogs that are like really in your dog's face, then that's obviously going to cause your dogs to be super skittish. So, um, just getting your dogs around the right dogs is, is the best thing to do. Not getting them around a bunch of really like, um, like obnoxious dogs. I'm going to take some more coffee. And then if you guys are here, like this video, leave a comment, let me know where you guys are from as well as, um, and I'll keep answering these dog training questions for a little bit longer. Cause this is fun. What, Coda? What you doing, baby? Um, is it correct to train a dog in the house than the yard? Yep, that's an easy transition. That's a great thing. Let's get this video to like at least 200 likes. We have 250 people here. Um, we need some more likes in here. And again, wh why I keep saying this, a lot of people like give me crap after the video. They're like, stop saying that. We already liked it. As I just, I'm just saying, cause there's like so many people here and the more you like the video, the more it tells my other subscribers that I'm live if they don't already know. So I'm just trying to help everybody out. Thank you guys. 213. That's great. Alabama. Woohoo. What's the weather in Alabama like right now, Mary? Probably pretty hot. Finger Lakes. Awesome. New York. Cool. How do I get my dog to stop? reacting to the doorbell um so this is like a very uh conditioned thing um so dogs who react to the doorbell uh is the same type of conditioning that we do with like positive reinforcement stuff like with clicker training and marker training uh, so basically what it does is the doorbell goes off and the dog starts to associate the doorbell with somebody being on the other side so the best thing to do is work on leave it place and desensitizing the doorbell throughout the day and correcting the reactivity when it happens. 80 degrees in Alabama. It's not so bad. Wisconsin. I love Wisconsin. California. Love California. I love Wyoming. Colorado. Hell yeah. Um, how do I teach my dog the difference between heel and when he can move around freely? The break command, Regina. Good question. I talk about it very frequently. The break command is absolutely huge. Being it, let me show you what I mean. Coda, fooey, come on. So, like with Lakota, ouse. So, watch this. I'm going to try to do this so you guys can see. So, this is what she wants. Coda, come here. Good. Ouse. Break. Good. So, the break command for the dogs that we work with and the dogs that we train basically uh, signifies to the dog that they can do whatever they want. Um, so the break command is a great opportunity to teach your dog how to turn things off and be able to be a dog. So I think it's the fairest thing to do. It's one of my ma major, major commands. Um, upstate New York. Woohoo. Cool. Um, my beagle is an outside dog. He bites 
if inside and working with him sometimes in his pen. Is this anxiety? No, it probably just sounds like a working dog with lack of exposure. Um, hi, hi, Tom. Love your videos. What should I do with a dog that is scared of strangers? Um, I answered this earlier, but just making sure people are ignoring your dog. If a dog, look at the point of view from the dog. If the dog is afraid of people and is less less likely to get comfortable with people, um, like I said before, working with wolves, I learned this. Um, the more you don't engage and the more you don't have any conflict with the dog by looking at them, talking to them, the better. So when people come in and when people come over, if they ask to see your dog, just tell them um, that she's she or he is in training. Somebody asked me, uh, stop, Koda, fui. Somebody asked me uh, what kind of coffee I'm drinking. I'm drinking uh, Nespresso. Um, so that's what I drink when I'm home usually. Um, I'm looking to re ah, I'm looking for a replacement for the sit command with my dog. Sometimes that makes him stop and focus. Um, I don't understand that question. Sorry. <clears throat> We just adopted a second dog, both spayed females. What is the right way to introduce toys together? Um, well, it's tough. Uh, I would just make sure as long as the uh, one of, one or the other one doesn't have like a resource guarding issues with toys, um, I think that you'll be. It's fairly it's fairly easy to say that they'll be fine. Like with my dogs, um, none. Like look at Lakota right now. She's literally laying on her toy with her head. Um, none of my dogs have problems with that. So um, I think it's just a, it's just a matter of like setting your dogs up for six success and being realistic with if your dog like really doesn't like other dogs playing with their toys or being possessive of toys then it's not a good idea to have them out it's way safer um how do i get my two month old german shepherd puppy not to pee and poop inside the house without a crate uh, get an x pen and make sure you're managing the schedule of the eating and drinking um, um uh, teaching your potty training your dog is a fairly easy thing as long as you're managing things if your dog eats and drinks, they're going to have to pee and poop. It's pretty simple. Um, Tom, you're awesome. How do I handle a dog that redirects on a prong collar? Um, try to use a, I think it's Alyssa, try to use a dominant dog collar or a slip collar. Sometimes if you use a prong collar for a dog that's potentially reactive or aggressive, um, they will redirect because it kind of just ticks them off. What does puppy pee when I, why does puppy pee when I go to him? Um, if you're going to a dog and you're really high pitched and getting them overly stimulated, the, you're stimulating the dog and, and, and really taking your dog to a really excited state that they're peeing on themselves. So that's something that you can control. So make sure that when you go out um, and you're doing these things with your dogs and you wanna interact with your dog, don't go so crazy with them and they won't be over stimulated. Um, hi, our German Shepherd listens and trains with me perfectly, but once my partner is near, he doesn't focus. I'm structured with him. Um, yeah, that's you answered your own question there. Um, if your other person is just like the play person in the relationship or the buddy in the relationship, as soon as that person enters the picture as you're trying to be structured and serious and working with your dog, then there's a likelihood of that individual person um, throwing your dog off. Um, so the best thing to do is just correct the dog. The dog has to know focus first and engagement first before you can correct them. But... If your dog isn't paying attention to you, you can just give him a little bit of pressure um, for doing that. North Carolina. Cool. I'm going to North Carolina next month. Um, how do you use Dutch or German commands? You just use them. You just start using them. Kenya. Cool. Kenya. That's pretty far from here. Um, are you coming to Kansas City soon? Nope. I was going to, but now I'm not going to Texas. How do I, uh, how do I correct my dog's reactiveness while in the vehicle? Sometimes leave it works. Um, don't be afraid to leave a leash and collar on your dog. Um, when you're obviously with the dog. So it's unsafe to leave a dog with a collar and a slip or a prong collar on unattended, but um, correct them with the leash. A lot of people think that the leash is only intended for outside on walks. The leash can be used in the house, in the car, um, so on and so forth. Tony, uh, Nashville, uh, I don't, I mean, I go to Nashville. I really enjoy, like Taylor, my girlfriend and I really enjoy Nashville. Uh, it's a really cool vibe town. Uh, we love country music and uh, we love good food, so Nashville is always a, a, a good place for us. But um, we don't have any training in Nashville. Um, and this goes for anybody. If, if anybody's interested in having me uh, with them, we do 
that's like part like the majority of my business these days is I come to you if you guys are interested in not only hosting or if you if you know a training facility or you know an area that you guys can use to have me host a seminar anywhere in the world uh, you can email us and um, that's something that we do quite often uh, obviously without quarantine but Cleveland yes Abby we're gonna do another Cleveland thing um, I just don't know when we have to wait for all this to calm down to book it but possibly in the fall if not it'll probably be um, I don't know. I don't know. Probably in the fall, we're going to try. Um, I'm watching your California videos. You're awesome. Thank you. Those California videos are awesome. Um, I had a lot of fun doing those. Um, should I ignore my GSD puppy while whining at night if she's if she went while she is outside? Um, if she's outside, she probably just wants to come back in. I, I don't really understand that question, but our family dogs jumps and growls at the new at any dog or humans that walk past um we want to take him off leash at the park um if you're if you want to take any dog off leash you have two options you either use the only technology on the planet that is um, able to connect with your dog via wireless remote like dog Tra makes or you just depend on uh, positive reinforcement in conjunction with verbal cues to get your dog back um, but for me uh, i don't I don't suggest anybody having their dog off leash um, unless they, that's why you see a lot of um, other dog trainers sometimes like have dogs on flexies the entire time of their life um, because they don't want to make the jump to using technology. So for me, um, it's really about uh, correcting a dog if they don't come back and being able to do that is, is with the remote collar. It's the only other way you can do it. Florida, uh, I went to Miami last year. It's the hottest place I've ever been to in my life, so I'll probably never go back to Miami again. But, um, no, I actually had a good time in Miami. It was just, like, too uncomfortably hot. It was so uncomfortably hot that I felt like I was in a different world. Um, so uh, that's that's that. Australia, um, we got some works for something in Australia, but like I said, it's really just about getting a place um, the hard, the hardest thing about me doing seminars, guys, is finding a place that has an indoor facility that we can do it in. So, Minnesota was ninety-seven. That's hot. Um, geez, a lot of questions. I appreciate this, guys. Uh, I'm gonna take some coffee. You guys like this video if you haven't yet. Oh, and by the way. Um, we did a giveaway the last couple of videos on the No Bad Dog masks as well as online training sessions with me. We're going to do giveaways pretty much every video forever now. So you guys make sure you turn on your notification bell. For those of you who don't know what that is, when you subscribe to like my channel or anybody else's channel, on their homepage, there's going to be a little bell. And if it's off, there's going to be a line through it. And if it's on, it'll be not a line. Um, and when I go live or when I reply back to people, including yourself, it'll notify you when I talk back to you. Because a lot of people um, don't realize that. But if you turn your notifications on, especially when we do the giveaways, a lot of times we do like the first three people or whatever. Um, it'll better your chance at winning like online sessions with me and stuff. <sighs> Um, why are you blocking me? Well, if you're on here, I haven't blocked you. Um, so I don't know what that means. Um, I have an online training session tomorrow. Looking forward to it. awesome. Yeah, that'll be fun. It's going to be fun. Um, how do I introduce yourself to scared dogs in a kennel, a shelter or a kennel? Um, well, it just depends on the safety. Like if it's a really scared dog and they're not going to do anything to you, just go in there and work with them for a long time period of time, positive reinforcement, uh, consistency and patience. And if it's, if it's a dog that's actually like aggressive or mean, then using a catch bowl is like the safest thing to do. Um, any ideas to help me with my German Shepherd puppy? He's suspicious of other dogs and barks a lot. Um, confidence and exposure. Um, so making sure it's hard to go and walk sometimes because he tends not to listen. Well, those are two different things. If your dog doesn't listen, that's an obedience problem. If your dog barks at other other dogs all the time, then that's like a relationship confidence problem. Do you do do you do online training? You I do online training all over the world. When you guys go to my online training portal, you pick a time and a date, and it's automatically scheduled for like it doesn't change my time. It gives you my availability in your time zones. 
So yes, we do them all over the world every day. How to stop your dog from being aggressive? Uh, that's a pretty weird question. Like there's so much to that. Um, love your videos. Use a 2.25. Is a 3.25 too big for an 80 pound GST? Nope, that's not. Um, just make sure you have a safety clip for all your prong collars. When I pick up my son's pit bull, he lunges for my face. I'm not sure what his intentions are. How can I get him to understand when I'm holding my son? It's not allowed. Oh, he's lunging at your son. Uh, you have to make sure you correct that behavior. And what I would do is proof it with using a doll. Uh, so obviously not your kid. Um, so if your kid's small enough to replicate like a doll or vice versa, um, I would be working on it with that. But ultimately finding a trainer that can actually come into your home and help you with that is it's that's that's like yeah, that's huge. Can you give me tips for my new dog? It's an Australian Shepherd and I'm 14. Yeah, just train it. <laughs> um, Tom, is there a particular dog trip model that you prefer to use? Yes, I use the dog trip 280C. That's my preferred. Uh, Coda, come. She just went after something over there. Good girl. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, the Dogtra 280C is my preferred model. Um, I also like the, the Dogtra Arc uh, hands-free, which is really, really nice. Um, what happened to the e-collar e educator? Nothing. I, I don't understand that question. What happened to it? I, I, don't, I don't get it. Um, should you discipline a dog that is frightened outside or will backfire? She's obedient, but no, I, I don't think you should discipline. I, should you discipline? Like, yes, but should you correct them? Probably not. Um, just take your time and be patient with it. Um, you will be announcing on YouTube you are coming to Australia. Yeah, I will. I'll be announcing it everywhere if I do come there. You're the best dog trainer on YouTube. Thank you. I appreciate that. When do you think using a halty instead of a pinch collar? Um, it's a good question. I think... The majority of like the tools that we use guys, like again, like when my clients come in, um, so there, so there's also like a difference in businesses. There's some businesses that spend like six months with dogs and they're, um, that's like the way that they're structured for us because we have, we, if we, if we spent six months with all the dogs that we worked with, like we do packaging and then our we wouldn't, because we're so busy, um, we get hundreds of inquiries a day for dog training. If we did like six month packages, we literally would, wouldn't be able to get to 10% of our stuff. So you have to like also gauge like what type of dog training that you're dealing with. Um, are you talking about like somebody who kind of does it on the side and has the opportunity to spend a lot more time individually because they don't have a lot of other things going on? Um, so my point is, is like when you're using equipment, the way that we use equipment is efficiency and effectiveness and uh, humane control as quickly as we can. So for us, like the halty is good. The harness is potentially okay if you're like, if you have a dog that doesn't do anything bad. Um, the flat collar, the martingale, but the majority of times, like the clients that we're, the clients that we're teaching and the clients that we're working with are like historically just like dog owners and they need help desperately and they don't, they just need help. And so for us, like the Herm Springer prong collars are like huge um, because they just give you like fast, effective control without like having to go into like this whole dog training course. Because the reality is guys is like we're training people who don't understand dogs we're training people who need help with their dogs desperately because they love them and they need help like right now and so um using head halties are totally fine if they work but my my opinion on them or is is exactly like my like do whatever works but head halties the only reason why i don't like them is because they don't have the opportunity to shut off there's constant pressure all the time because the dog is constantly pulling on the nose like this. Um, and it also becomes very aware and, and apparent to the dog when it's on because it's so bulky and in the dog's face. Whereas if like a pinch collar or a prong collar, it's just like a regular collar that goes on that you apply pressure to and it's a lot more safer um, because the dog is actually listening to the verbal cues instead of reacting to the pressure that's given like the head halty. So it's all just on how you use it, how you're comfortable with it. But um, I hope that that breaks it down to you because um, I think that that's important to know like 
what type of training company that you're dealing with because there's a lot of training companies that take in maybe two or three dogs a month and spend every single day with them um, and which is totally fine and okay but there's a, there's also like a lot of dog training um, we, we try to help as many people as we possibly can and try to keep up with like the the amount of dogs that come in that desperately need help and for us like it's about education effective efficient and the the herm springer solves a lot of that and um um, fortunately, we have some some cool news coming up with Herm Springer. Hopefully, uh, that we're working on some cool projects with. So I'm excited to be able to get into that with you guys at a future date. Um, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. Can you come to San Diego and help with my fear aggressive German Shepherd? Um, yeah, sure. You just gotta hire me. I'll, I'll go anywhere if you hire me. Uh, especially if there's Cali Creamin involved. For those of you who joined my uh, live sessions before, you know that I'm a fan of the Cali Creamin. Um, I plan on going to the ABC College. Do you know if I can specifically request for you? Yeah, you can. Um, I don't. I don't know exactly how it works, but yeah, you can request me uh, as a mentor trainer. Um, I just don't know if they if they only like allow people to do mentorships with people that are local or not. But yeah, you can request it. Do I train? Do I train protection dogs? Uh, no, my facility does, but I do not. It's not like it's not my gig. Coda knows recall, but only often comes uh, his own pace, stopping to smell and do whatever. Even with the e collar, what can I do to keep his focus on me? Um, just using the, what I do is like using the continuous option if the dog knows the rec the recall really well as well as the uh, remote collar and just using that as an accelerator to get the dog to come to you faster. Um, and then as well, um, you can help structure that up and continue that up with a, uh, with, um, a long line too. How do I get my dog's attention and do recall while he's playing with other dogs? Um, that's like a really, really high... So uh, to answer your question, that's a very, very high level thing to do. To recall a dog playing with other dogs is like top tier obedience. Um, so you really have to make sure that your dog knows their stuff before you even entertain that idea. What is your opinion on, uh, wow. What is your opinion? Hello, 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 hello. How do you choose the right size prong? Um, go to hermspringer.com and, and check out the, uh, the sizing chart that they have. How do you train a dog not to bark and bite people when I'm not home? Um, that's really tough to do if you're not home to reinforce things. Um, but I would, I, that's hire a dog trainer. That's something I can't answer in 30 seconds, unfortunately. What's BS? When you say, what's your opinion on BS? What does that mean, BS? I have a GSD and Doberman that have fought five times requiring stitches. How can I fix this? Again, um, hire a dog trainer. That's really like a very in-depth thing that's life dependent. So, um, what's your opinion on breed specific laws? Got it. Um, it's tough. Uh, my opinion on it is they suck. Um, but like, you know, I, I try to make sure I do my research before I fully put out like, this is how I feel. Um, but like my immediate response to that is, is that kind of sucks for dogs. Cause I know a lot of dogs who are on those lists, like are like the sweetest, nicest dog. So, um, it sucks, but like at the same time, is it in places that people are, cause for me, it's like the same thing I thought about like remote collar training, how all these places were banning them. And then I started realizing that these countries literally have no education on the equipment Therefore, it might be a better thing for them to ban them and then grant access to this equipment by educating or taking a course. So like it's the same situation. Is there a bunch of people in the area breeding these dogs for like really bad stuff and by banning them will decrease that and hopefully save dogs like brutally like livid lives? So um, like all together, I think we just have to make sure we're educated on like why they're being um, restricted like if it's a restriction off of like ignorance and not understanding the breed that sucks but if it's banning them because people are breeding them for all the wrong things and setting them up for failure um it's kind of like a you know it's a it's a thing um toughest breeds to train in your opinion that's a great question um siberian huskies great danes uh, are the toughest two breeds to train because they just don't want to work uh for anybody or anything <laughs> 
Thank you guys. You guys are the best. Um, have you ever gotten bit? That's a good question. I have, n I've gotten, I've never gotten bit by training a dog. Um, I've never, like out of all the aggressive dogs that I've worked with, I've never gotten bit ever. Uh, and a lot of people will say, well, then you haven't been doing it long enough. And I kind of reply of like, or, uh, you're just extremely careful and due diligent and experienced. Um, I have gotten bit breaking up dog fights. Um, that's the only time I've been bitten. Um, and it's been twice my whole life. And I was, like I said, an animal control officer, a dog walker, aggressive dog trainer, daycare, uh, a business owner with dogs in general, uh, t times two. Um, and that's the only time I've ever gotten bitten was just breaking up dog fights. And, um, you know, that's, that's inevitable. It's tough. How do you feel about border collies? I think that they're awesome for the right people, making sure you work them. They're like the best like workers ever. Do you believe in raw food diet? Yes, I feed all my dogs raw food. Um, I have a podcast on that, on my podcast, on my No Bad Dogs podcast. Um, so I go into depth with a specialist on exactly why I feed raw food and um, things like that. This is the longest live I've ever done. We've been doing this for about an hour. I'm going to take some more coffee and answer some more questions. I appreciate you guys. It's an absolutely beautiful Sunday here in upstate New York. Um, I hope everyone is really uh, sane and happy and healthy um, and things are starting to open up in the United States, which is like really um, exciting to hear. So I'm going to take some more coffee. If you guys are here, don't forget to like this video. Um, see if we can get it up to 300 likes. That would be cool. <laughs> My first live is the longest one. Yeah, this is the longest live I've done, but... Like I said, this is just a beautiful day, and um, we don't have any content filmed right now to put out, so I wanted to hang out with you guys for a little bit. Um, I am in, like, the Saratoga area, whoever asked that. Um, what basics should I teach my dog before introducing her to other dogs or people? Good question. Heal, uh, leave it, sit, stay, and probably place for other people in the house. Um... <sighs> How to stop a dog fight. Best thing to do is pull their back legs out. Um, that's the best thing I've I've learned over the years, uh, pulling their back legs out. It doesn't happen often, knock on something. Uh, it doesn't happen often, but when it, you know, it dogs are dogs, and when you're working with as many dogs as you do, it, it happens, you know, and it's just one of those things. Uh, what slip collar do you use? I make my own slip collars. You can look that up on DIY slip collars on my YouTube channel. Have you ever trained a pit bull? Yep, all the time. They're one of my favorite breeds to train. We got one in right now from New York City. Um, how do I stop a dog puppy from biting on the leash? Uh, I'm going to do a video on that uh, coming up soon. How tight should my Springer be? Uh, your, your, your prong collar? Um, your prong collar should be tight enough to where it doesn't move down, but not tight enough where it's like going into the dog's skin. Um, so just making sure it stays in place. <clears throat> Uh, in a shelter environment, what type of training can I do to get a scared dog not to shy away from people? It's been re that's really, really tough. Um, I've done some shelter work myself in the past. 300 likes. Woohoo! Thanks, guys. I appreciate that. Um, it's been really tough in the past because it's just a really, it's a really crappy environment for anybody, honestly, because it's like too chaotic and you get a dog that shuts down. Um, the best thing to do is to just try to get that dog out of the kennel and spend some time with it outside um, and just do the best you can to like use social media to push the dog out of the scenario because honestly, like a lot of the dogs that are shy that sit in the back of the kennel um, don't make it because they they don't open up. They become defensive. They become potentially aggressive. So it's tough. Shelters are tough, man. How do I approach training with my pet lab and working lab differently? Um, well, if it's a pet, that means that they probably don't have a job. And if it's a working lab and they're doing work, um, then their their routine and their training would be differently. But other than like that, um, I don't think that there's really too much of a difference. Uh, um, I'm a retired trainer and still learning from your videos. Thank you very much. Um, how do I discipline my dog? Um, Many different ways, voice inflection, body pressure, um, negative reinforcement, positive, positive punishment. Um, there's many different ways that you can uh, discipline a dog. Wow, there's a lot of questions. Ta. 
Let's do this one. Julia, I have a three-month-old Aussie, and I live in Texas. He is barking a lot, and he sometimes jumps up on us and tries to also play bite. Um, yeah, just make sure that you're correcting the behavior. If a dog is, like, actively doing, like, all this, like, here's, like, a good example is Lakota. I think you guys can see her. Lakota is a Dutch Shepherd. Uh, and basically, she's a black Malinois um, Dutch Shepherd. Um you know, for me and my dogs, it's, it's, and that's why I started working with dogs is because my whole life I had the ability to like, just have clarity with them. Um, and it's really just about like teaching them, no, you can't do that. And yes, you can do that. So operant conditioning, um, if your dog is doing something you really don't like and is very inappropriate or detrimental to your health or theirs, if you're not doing anything about it to punish them in that exact moment, then it's going to continue to happen. So what that punishment is, who knows, get a leash on your dog. Um, start correcting them for that. It really just depends. Uh, do you train with positive reinforcement? Of course. Positive reinforcement is, is, it's impossible not to train with positive reinforcement. Um, is your recent video with the German Shepherd use a plastic pinch? I used a plastic pinch on Grizzly Bear mainly because it was available really quickly and I didn't feel like the regular prong collar was necessary um, during that time because he was new uh, and I didn't want to put a lot of pressure on him or, um, you know, make him feel a certain way during his, you know, put him through a lot of work the first day. I actually trained him yesterday on a flat collar and a leash, which was pretty cool. Do I like Yorkies? Yes. How do I introduce two dogs to other dogs? Bring them for a walk on neutral grounds. Any thoughts on the pet corrector? Uh, I don't, I don't know what that is. Dr. IQ Mini, any tips on getting going? Uh, watch my YouTube videos on how to introduce the uh, remote collar. Um, what's the best way to start as a dog trainer? Uh, I, uh, I answered that a couple times, but like, listen to my podcast about answering the number one question I get. Uh, I think that that's, that's like a good place to start. Um, do you sell safety chains? Yes, I do. My website, uh, safety collars or safety clips. Uh, America's canine educator.com. I'm going to answer a couple more here. How do you train your dog to not go through the door after me? Teaching them to sit and stay and then progressionally introducing uh, um, threshold building after that. So impulse control. Do you have an academy in Alabama? No, I do not. Um, Tom, thank you for sharing your knowledge. You're welcome. Um, how many training sessions a day and for how long? Great question, Melissa. Um, I would go out and work with your dog for the quality over quantity. So like 10, 15 minute sessions, as many times as you want throughout the day. Um, oh, look at Lola. Uh, you just want to make sure that the dog, <coughs> excuse me, isn't um, getting like really tired. So um, I think that that's like crucial. Um, do you feel it's harder or easier to train large versus small? I think it's, it's harder to train smaller dogs because the mentality that, dog owners have when they raise smaller dogs is the dog could do no harm because it's small and they don't care about it uh, in that sense. So I think smaller dogs get the shorter end of the stick because people don't, people don't realize that they're animals and they're dogs and they have the same like learning capacities as like a, a, a regular like big dog. So I think it's harder with smaller dogs because uh, not too many times I've seen a smaller dog actually treated like a dog unfortunately. They're constantly being picked up, babied, coddled, talked to, pampered, um, and it creates just a nightmare of a dog mentally. And it's, it's in my opinion, really, really hard for them to come out of it. Um, so I would say smaller dogs, hands down, like no questions asked, like really tough compared. Um, yeah, we are trying to get something in Europe. I think the UK is like our, our, our goal right now. Um, so... We're trying. Uh, CBD is good for dogs. Um, just got to get the right stuff. Uh, how do I teach my dog how to settle down and relax? Teach them to place and stay. Um, all right, guys. I think I'm going to sign off for today because I've answered uh, over an hour worth of questions. So uh, I just want to say thank you, guys, uh, sincerely. Um, before I sign off, I just wanted to let you know uh, we're going to do this again. So don't worry if I didn't answer your question. We'll do it again. I'm not going anywhere. Um, I'm going to go enjoy the day with my dogs and hopefully the family. And, um, I just wanted to say thank you very much for, uh, supporting me on YouTube and commenting and liking on the stuff that I do. It, it, it gives me fuel to keep going. 
Um, so thank you guys so much for, for hanging out with me today and continually in the future, we're just like growing as a community and getting bigger and bigger and he healthier and healthier and everybody's happy. So, um, you're welcome. I will always do this if you guys are willing to listen and, and to uh, take in the information. My goal, as you guys know, is to help as many dog owners as I possibly can. I'm in the people business, not in the dog business. Um, the dogs are the easy part. The people are a little bit harder. So I'm going to continue to do this. I hope everyone has a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend. Um, if you guys are watching this, don't forget to like this video before you sign off. If you're watching it in the future, like and comment. Tell me where you guys are from. Um, we'll see you guys next week for sure. Uh, turn on your notification bell so you don't miss my next live that we do. Um, that's it. Have a good day, everybody. Bye.